Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how I use the puppet tool in Adobe After Effects to animate still photos and more specifically cover art. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here I'm in Adobe After Effects and I have a little sample right here of a video I made where I turned a 2D image and sort of made it 3D in a way. I also made it animated. I added a bunch of lighting to it. I'm gonna show you my favorite effects that I like to pair with um, the position, puppet position pin tool and how I achieve this look. If you guys want a tutorial on how I create this intro part, um, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment so that I know. Um, but let's just get started right now. So here's essentially what I'm gonna create. So I'm gonna make a new project new composition I'm gonna make it 1080 by 1350 uh, typically cover art is 1080 by 1080 the first thing you want to do before you do anything else is you want to go into Photoshop or any other program really and you want to remove the background from the subject so what I mean by this is if you have a picture of the weekend you want to remove the background so that you just have the picture of the weekend left so um, you can actually import PSD files in After Effects so that's really really helpful so um, let's just say you're hired for something like this. What you can do is you can get the graphic designer to just send you a PSD or something like that. So right here, if you press choose layer, you can choose the layer. So the first one is gonna be a picture of the weekend. Right here, this is what I mean. So you can use the pen tool, you can use the quick selection tool, you can use a website to remove the background. It's really up to you. Um, I have two layers just because I wanted the background layer that was in the picture uh, as well because it isn't just black you, you can just make it a solid layer but i like how this looks like so right here we have the picture so the first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to expand it this first layer right here we're going to press on the position um pin tool right here the puppet position pin tool and i'm going to just show you how it works i'm not too too familiar with it so i'm going to show you just the basics so if you just click anywhere on the picture right here will create a point. You wanna sort of place anchor points. So these anchor points are gonna be places where you don't want to move. So what I mean by this is if you try to move this, the whole thing moves, right? But say you add these anchors, so like these restrictions, those points won't move. So right now the head is just gonna move now. So you can see what that does. So essentially what I did um, in that previous project file I showed you was I just made it nod sort of, like I, I put it back and forth. So how you do this is you go to mesh, and you basically, um, you create keyframes for every time you move this head. So you wanna select on the point you're using. So puppet pin one, and we're gonna create a keyframe right there. And I think every two seconds is probably good for an animation type thing. So we're just gonna move it right. So in that two seconds, his head nods. And basically we're just gonna right click. First we're gonna highlight it and then we're gonna right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. Basically what this does is it sort of makes the animation smoother. Let's actually make it move a little more so there's a little more movement. So his head uh, moves a little bit more now. And because it's gonna be like a looping animation, we can just copy these. And I'm just gonna paste it like every two seconds basically. So now there's gonna be like a looping animation. I think it's gonna look really, really good. So basically we're really just done the animation part of things. This is how you move it. Um, and the rest is just creating depth. Because you have a 2D image, it looks flat. So typically a background with a black background is a, a bit better because it's darker. So you don't really know what's in the background. So you don't know if it's 3D or not. So the way I'm gonna actually create that 3D effect is I'm gonna use some lighting effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search up light rays. This helps me a lot. I use this um, in the project file and actually every single cover art I've ever animated, I've used this. Um, so you wanna select the center point. So typically it would be like in the middle of their face. I'm gonna put his nose. And then I think that more you increase the radius, the more realistic it looks like. So you can see what that does. It moves it with the nose. So you can see how dope that is. So that uh, light ray makes it look 3D. I'm gonna just make it a little bit softer, a little less intense, something like that. And then something else I do is I add uh, something that's called amorphous light or mood lighting. And basically what this does is it adds a bunch of shadows to the face. So let me just remove the light rays. So as you can see, it got a lot darker. 
um, I'm gonna make the cloud size a lot bigger and I'm gonna increase the brightness a little bit. So basically what this does is it cycles through a bunch of light. You can see um, it's sort of like it's pulsing in a way. So this makes it a little bit more authentic. So when I do this, I uh, decrease the contrast, increase the brightness and increase the cloud size. It's a little bit more natural. And then we're just gonna add light rays on top of it. So there we go. That's basically it for the whole animation part of things. Um, the next thing is adding the intro and outro. Like I said before, if you guys want a video on how I did it specifically for that um, video, um, make sure to comment below. But I'm just gonna show you a very basic way of doing things. So we're gonna actually uh, pre-compose this. So highlight both of these, pre-compose. So pre-composing basically is nesting in Premiere Pro, but for After Effects. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this, go to transition or transform. And we're gonna set a toggle animation for position, scale, rotation, opacity. So at this point, it's normal, right? So we're gonna move this to the end point. So let's just say we want the transition, the intro transition to take up four seconds. So anything we do now is gonna sort of be the starting point. So I'm gonna press on this so I can see the, the values. So I'm just gonna scale in like a lot. So let's just say we scale in like 400 and I move it all the way to the left right here. And let's just say we start at zero opacity so it fades in. I'm actually, I'm gonna do this one last. Let's say we rotate it a bit. So right now it's just gonna rotate. And you can see it's a little bit too small because you can see the transparent background right there. So we're gonna scale it in even more. So let's just say we do 500 just to be safe. And now we can make the opacity zero. And once again, I'm gonna highlight all these. I'm gonna right click, press keyframe assistant, easy ease. I'm also gonna make a background layer because uh, when the transparency is zero or the opacity is zero, there's no background there. So we're gonna add black to the back. So you can see it fades in. The only thing I don't like about something like this is it, uh, it stops so abruptly, right? So what we can do is we can move the scale out a little bit more. So it seems a little bit more natural if you can see what I'm talking about. And even at this point, we can make it scale in a little bit so that even during the animation, there's a little more motion. So you can see the scale value goes up. And basically to make the outro, it's gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna copy and paste it. And every value on the right is gonna end up on the left, essentially. Um, so we're gonna move everything here. This is gonna be at the end. And the beauty of having these match the end, like the, the beginning match the end, is that animation is gonna be like a loop. It's gonna look really, really nice and seamless. So right here, if we move the scale backwards like this, so like matching this um, keyframe, that same natural movement is gonna come in. So let's move it a little bit back. So right about here. Actually, I might move this a little bit closer. So we press play right here. You can see it fades out and then if it loops, there you go. So let's just say there's like opacity is just like a hundred, right? You can probably see a little bit better. We can sort of just move in the opacity so it happens later. And the last thing you can do is you can add a bunch of overlays. The more like layers there are to this composite, the better. So what you can do is you can import like any overlay you have, you can download it, you can create them, you can create like dust or something. Um, I'm sure I have one in here somewhere. So I have this one. We're just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So transform it. And it's also like blue. So we can just like go to hue and saturation and then just turn down the saturation or whatever. Might even use Lumetri color to just increase the contrast. 
So let's just say we have this overlay, right? A lot of dust and stuff like that. Um, I think if we press on the second toggle right here and then select screen. You can see what it does. I wouldn't put it at the beginning because you want it to be black at the beginning. But like somewhere here. And maybe scale it in much, much more so that the particles are bigger. It, it adds a new um, sort of dynamic to everything. So yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna go to the previous um, project file so you guys can see which layers I actually used. So you can see I used the dust layer right here. And this is scaled in a bunch. This is scaled in 600, right? And then I think I applied Gaussian blur to it so that it would sort of keep the focus on the subject. And then if we go on the effects I use, I use light rays, I use um, amorphous mood lighting. And yeah, that's about it. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If it did, hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.